Um, just a couple of intimations. Um, those of you who deliver our newsletters, if you still have the, the wallet, if you could pass that back sometime, that would be good. And um, I believe we've got a birthday girl today, so we're saying happy birthday to Anne Walker. Hope you have a lovely day. Um, you know, it's easy to lose track of what month of the year it is, never mind what day it is. But today is the 1st of November, and this is All Saints Day, which is observed by Christians all around the world. And it's a time to honour all the saints of the church. And so our first hymn is written specifically to celebrate this occasion. And it's become one of our best known hymns. And it's Mission Praise 148 for All the Saints. a wonderful way to start the service and you can just imagine yourself down in the Royal Albert Hall there. We're going to pass over now to Alison who's going to lead us in the prayer of approach. Alison. Can we all pray? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Loving God we give thanks for this day. And as we approach your presence this morning, may we put aside any thoughts that would hinder us from having a closer relationship with you. We give thanks for our families, our friends, our neighbours, our health, and for the joy of knowing you are with us at all times. Lord, it's so easy for us to simply go with the flow, to keep our heads down, 
anything for an easy life. Lord, you want us to stand up, to speak out and go beyond our comfort zones. Speak in truth in love, even if that makes us unpopular. Lord, give us courage, just a little so we can spread your word, even when others do not want to hear it. As this is All Saints Day, we give thanks for those who have gone before us, the saints who we have just sung about this morning. We think of St Francis of Assisi, St Columba, Jane Heenan, Mother Teresa, and many more men and women who we could mention this morning, who were persecuted for speaking out and living out the true beliefs of their faith. We give thanks for the privilege that we have of meeting as a congregation to worship you. Lord, bless all those who will be persecuted today for having a Christian faith. You know who they are and we ask your blessing on them at this time. Lord, hear our prayer as we say together the prayer you taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're now going to sing Mission Praise 784, Ye Servants of God. going to hand over to Cara, who's going to read for us both the, the readings today. Um, over to you, Cara. Thank you. So the first reading today is 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. See how much the Father has loved us. His love is so great that we are called God's children, and so in fact we are. This is this is why the world does not know us. It has not known God. My dear friends, we are now God's children, but it is not yet clear what we shall become. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Everyone who has this hope in Christ keeps himself pure, just as Christ is pure. We will now sing Mission Praise 417 with Tie the Cross.
is Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 17, the enormous crowd. After this, I looked and there was an enormous crowd. No one could count all the people. They were from every race, tribe, nation and language. And they stood in front of the throne and of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They called out in a loud voice, Salvation comes for our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, the elders and the four living creatures. Then they threw themselves face downward in front of the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honour, power and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders asked me, who are these people dressed in white robes and where do they come from? I don't know, sir. You do, I answered. He said to me, these are the people who have come safely through the terrible persecution. They have washed their robes and they then made them white with the blood of the lamb. That is why they stand before God's throne and serve him day and night in his temple. He who sits on the throne will protect them in his presence. Never again will they hunger or thirst. Neither sun or any scorching heat will burn them, because the lamb who is the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Thank you, Cara, for reading that so beautifully for us. Um, we're going to hand over now to Andrew, who's going to lead us in a time of reflection on these readings. Andrew. Thanks, Anne. Uh, today is known as All Saints Day when we remember the saints of the church, not just the well-known saints like St. Peter and St. Paul, but the ordinary saints of the church. The Bible teaches us that all God's people are saints, the ones who have remained faithful to him through the hard and testing times of life. There's a wonderful hymn which will be used at the end of our service, when the saints go marching in, and that's referring to those who have proclaimed Jesus as Saviour and Lord, and demonstrated that belief in action. In the Revelation to St John, it talks about the saints as being very precious to God because they have come out of the Great Tribulation. Now, the Great Tribulation was the terrible times which Christians faced before the Romans finally accepted Christianity. That happened when the Emperor Constantine was converted to Christianity. On his deathbed in 337 AD, he issued an edict which protected Christians throughout the Roman Empire. But before then, Christians were treated barbarically. They were accused of cannibalism because it was thought that they drank the blood and ate the flesh of Jesus. Christians were dragged before the courts. They were forced to offer a sacrifice to the emperor. If they refused, they could be tortured, imprisoned or thrown to the lions. Many Christians refused to burn incense to the emperor and they gave up their lives rather than refuse their faith. So that's what John of Patmos is referring to when he talked about the Great Tribulation. John himself paid a high price for his faith. He was banished to that island of Patmos where he spent the rest of his life in isolation. But it was there that he had this amazing encounter with God which helped him gain an understanding of heaven. While in Patmos, John was a solitary figure, but in his revelation, he understood that in heaven, he would never be alone. In fact, he would be surrounded by an enormous crowd of people just like him. People who had suffered terribly for their faith, many who had given up their lives, and many who continued to promote the Christian faith even when they knew that they were risking their lives. Ever since then, John's revelation has been a comfort to Christians undergoing terrible persecution. Christians in China, in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, Christians in North Korea and Indonesia. 
But many ordinary Christians who have not suffered that level of persecution still draw enormous comfort from the passage we have read today. Because what we have is the most vivid picture of what heaven is like. Many ordinary Christians like ourselves realise that ordinary everyday life can feel like the great tribulation. In the course of life, things happen to Christians which can knock their faith. When life brings its disappointments and hardships, people can find their faith sorely tested. These hardships might take many different forms. The breakup of a marriage, the abuse of a relative or trusted individual, the death of a loved one, the loss of a job. People find their faith tested when they see wars, famine and natural disaster. People struggle with their faith when they see church denominations fighting amongst themselves while ignoring the big picture. They struggle with their faith when prayer seems to go unanswered and life can seem terribly, terribly brutal. The revelation experienced by St John refocuses our minds not on the things as they presently stand, but on the promise to come. What lies ahead is more wonderful than anything that we could possibly imagine. So John has to paint an image in our mind. He tells us that heaven will not be for an exclusive few, that people will come from every corner of the world to proclaim Jesus as Lord of the universe. Now we don't know the details, but we do know that heaven will be a place of warmth, light and beauty. If there are tribes and nations in heaven, there will also be family and family members. All sorrow will be replaced with inexpressible joy. In that place, people don't grow old or fall sick or die. Instead, they live forever to give thanks to God, enjoying his heavenly home. Now, a Church of Scotland minister, Tom Gordon, remembers being asked about heaven by one of his grandchildren. And here's that encounter. What's heaven like? Nathan asked. He was always asking about that stuff and sometimes he didn't wait for an answer, but this time he wasn't running away. What's heaven like? Nathan repeated, just in case his question hadn't actually been heard the first time. Why are you asking that? I replay, replied, because grown-ups are clever, you see, and it's always a good technique to answer a question with another question, because it gives you some time to think and respond properly to Mr. Questioning. Well, you said my Nana had gone to heaven, so what's heaven like if Nana's there? I suppose I could have answered his question with another question of my own, but I couldn't think of one. And anyway, it didn't sound much like he was in the mood to be fobbed off. I suppose it's kind of nice, was all I could say. Kind of feeble, really, I reckoned. But I hoped it might help. Nicer than here, Nathan went on. I suppose, I replied, sounding really feeble now. Nicer than our house, he continued. I expect so, the increasingly feeble grown-up response. So where is it then? Nathan asked. Feeble responses appeared to be no deterrent to Mr. Questioning's current line of inquiry. So I reverted to type again, reduced to answering a question with another question, trying desperately, desperately to negotiate time to think. What do you reckon? I asked. Don't know, Nathan shot back. Why did it not sound feeble when he was honest? Don't know, he repeated, repeated. Clearly he wasn't finished with his answer. See, I was thinking about my Nana, right? And it's just that I don't want her to be in heaven because that must be far away. And if you don't know where it is and I can't find it anywhere, even though I've looked and looked and looked, I don't want my Nana to be in a place I can't find, like far away. And if I knew where heaven was, I could pop over and see how she was getting on just like we did before she went away. But I can't, because I can't find heaven, and you don't know either, eh? So I just think about my Nana, and she's there, okay? He paused, 
The current line of inquiry appeared to be temporarily suspended. Okay, I suppose, I replied feebly, not supposing anything was okay at all. So you can find your Nana when you think about her, I continued feebly, reduced now to repeating what I'd just been told, because there wasn't a question to use to respond to a question anymore. But I still needed time to think. Yeah, when I think about my Nana, she just feels close, eh? I was going to reply, but I really had nothing to say. Neither had Nathan, really apart from a final contribution to our heaven-centred discussion. I suppose, he said, if my Nana and me are together, when I think about my Nana, then I'm in heaven with her. So heaven is where Nana is with me and when Nana is with me. What's heaven like? I was still struck with his original question. He was always asking about stuff and sometimes he'd worked out on his own what the answer would be. Now he was running away. But here's something that I found helpful. It's from a poem, Where Are They Now? The people I've met with, the people that I've fought, the ones that I've cared for and those that I've not, the people who matter, the ones I disown, pray tell me, but where have they gone? They come along with you in memory's store, they're part of your life since they've come through your door. Their influence stays with you never to go, they're always with you, you know. What, even the bad ones I'm happy to shun, and those that I've damaged who hate what I've done? I want them to leave me, to let me alone. Please tell me that they have all gone. I'm sorry to tell you, but that's not the case. The worst of encounters has not gone to waste. You're moulded and shaped by experience, so they'll always come with you, you know. The people I've failed with, the people who've done wrong, the ones who've rejected me, laughed at my song. You tell me they matter, wherever, whatever their tone. You mean that they'll never be gone? It's not just your saints who will shape you and mould your character, purpose and future. So hold to the truth of the matter and watch how you go. You are what they've made you, you know. And here's another meditation he has on the saints. <clears throat> it's called Welcoming each wonder. St Peter, St Matthew, St Andrew, St George, St Patrick, St David, St John, St Thomas Aquinas, St Martin of Tours, St, what's his name? Bother, it's gone. St Margaret, St Mary, St Bridget, St Anne, St Rhoda and Sweet Bernadette, St Agnes, St Francis, St Sarah, St Joan, St Thingamy, Oh, I forgot. But what about Danny, who's everyone's mate? And Evelyn, who washes the stair? And Trevor, who cares for the folk in the home? And Michael, and Barbara, and Claire? Who go out co co collecting for Oxfam each year and ask no praise or renown? And Tracy, who's fostered a whole host of kids? And Bob, the street sweeper in town? And all of the people whose names are not known, the quiet ones, the gentle, the shy, well, out of the limelight, not seen in the stained glass, the ones who quietly slip by. Unnoticed, unheralded, out of the gaze of publicity, seeking no praise, who live lives of sacrifice, service and love, and have done for all of their days. Look out for the heroes that nobody knows, and saints all around us you'll see. And maybe one day you'll be noticed as well. Saint so-and-so. Goodness, that's me. We're now going to sing Light of the World, and it's Mission Praise 1086.
step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me So highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created. All for love's sake became poor. And here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. We're going to pass over now to Marlon, who's going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Marlon. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Everlasting God, we pray for your church built on the foundations of the saints. Heavenly Father, as we come together from our homes, at the start of this fresh month, we bring you thanks for all this means. This year has been strange, long, hard, different and difficult. As everything around us has changed, we thank you that you remain the same. We bring before you those who have struggles, those who face persecution and fear and those not knowing where the next meal will come from. 
We give thanks for the efforts that have been made around the country to feed children and families who are struggling. We thank you that holiday hunger is now something being talked about. We know that this issue runs deeper and needs a bigger fix than simply providing food where it's needed. As so many do what they can in this case, we bring before you the influencers, the decision makers. Help them to look closer, address the issues of rising living costs, low incomes and unemployment. There are so many factors that can lead to families facing difficulties. As our world continues to be gripped by this pandemic, be with each of us. Be with the NHS, the scientists and the decision makers as they all try to negotiate us through this season we find ourselves in. We pray with hope for a time when this virus will no longer have the hold over the world that it does right now. Loving God, we all have folk and situations and things you have placed in our hearts. We give them to you now. We pray all these things with confidence in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final hymn, song on this All Saints Day will no doubt stay with us for the rest of the day. When the Saints. His steps will be more steady when the saints go marching in. Thank you, Marlon, for our time of prayer. And as Marlon said, that will probably stay with us for the rest of the day. We're going to hand over now to Tracy, who's going to lead us through the grace. Tracy. Thank you, Anne. Before we say the grace, I'll just quickly run through the actions once again, in case there are any new people joining us today. Um, when we say may the grace, we hold out our hands in front of us. The love of God give yourself a hug, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You can hold hands with the person you're with or reach out to the next screen. Okay, let's say the grace together. <clears throat> May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.